Hi, I'm James Mallows, and I'd like to show you how to make a basket like this one from a letter sequence like this. That's called a word in the undip language. And if you were to learn undip, you'd be able to make a basket in the dark, or even make a basket you'd never seen before with your hands covered, and then surprise yourself with what you'd made. Let's get oriented by looking at a really simple basket. This basket is called UD in UNDIP. A um, mathematician might call it a theta graph. A chemist might call it acetylene. The chemist would see a, a carbon atom at each of these vertices, and this, this would be the triple bond, and the uh, hydrogen out at each end. You might say that the mathematician and the chemist see this as a structure. A physicist would look at this and call it self-energy and see it as a story. Well, that's kind of surprising and it's kind of helpful because think about it, if you're going to make something while you're making it, it is a story. Let's look at the story that a physicist sees in this, in this basket. The white balloon here is an electron moving along, happily along, dum da dum da dum, and suddenly the electron emits a photon. The orange balloon is the photon moving away from the electron. And when a, an electron emits a photon, it experiences a change in momentum and energy. We can see the change in energy because the electron's path changes from white to black. And we can see the change in momentum because at the moment that the photon is emitted, there's a sudden change in the direction, a, a bending away from the recoil of sending off that photon. The story continues. Our electron is still moving happily along, now on the black balloon. And it comes to this point and it meets the same photon again. This time it absorbs the photon with again a change in momentum and energy. The color changes to show the change in energy and again its path is bent by the impact of absorbing that photon. Our electron continues on along and he's back where we started and the story repeats itself. Wow, what a cool story just from a really simple basket. So let's notice the properties of this basket that let it tell that story. The first is that at each vertex there are three edges meeting. Each vertex is an event for our electron and there are three edges meeting there. A mathematician would call this a trivalent basket. The other special property is that there's a closed loop that goes through each of the vertices. And that loop became the path of the electron. Uh, that's called a Hamiltonian circuit, and a mathematician would call this a Hamiltonian basket. So a basket that can tell that kind of story is both trivalent and Hamiltonian. In UNDIP, the same story is told with just two letters, UD. In UNDIP, it helps to lean your head to the right, as, as if you were reading an, an emoticon, but leaning the other way. Or, even better, to turn the page so that you're reading from the bottom to the top. The beginning of the story, where the electron is just going happily along, is invisibly present here at the beginning of the UNDIP word. And the end of the story, where it says that the story repeats itself, is invisibly present at the end of the undip word. Each letter represents an event for the electron. An open letter is an emission of a photon, and a closed letter is an absorption of a photon. So we can picture the, the photon leaving the open portion of the U and flying up and being absorbed on the paddle of the D. UD has two letters, and we can anticipate that every undip word has an even number of letters, since each photon must be emitted and absorbed. So UD says that a photon is emitted, and then it is absorbed. And implicitly it says that it, the story repeats itself. The story UD doesn't have to repeat. It makes a perfectly good little episode by itself. The electron emits a photon, 
and it absorbs it again. In fact, in any story about an electron, let's say this book, between sentences, we could add the sentence, the electron emitted a photon and absorbed it. We could put that sentence in in the middle or the end of the book or even at the beginning. It might not advance the plot, but it will make perfect sense. Since UD tells a story that we can insert as an episode in another story, when it comes to undip words, we can insert UD wherever we like in another word. That makes another undip word and it tells another story. We can also insert our episode at the end of the word or at the beginning. So starting with the empty word, which we'll represent with an empty sheet of paper, we can put UD in front of or in back of that word and we get UD. And again we can make an insertion either in the middle or at the, B, at the end of UD and we get two more words. And we're off to the races making new stories from old stories and long undip words from short undip words. But already there's a problem. In a word like UUDD, we have two photons around at the same time. And the question arises, should the one that comes from here end up there or there? And this one, the same question. And the only simple answer is to not allow their paths to cross. If their paths cannot cross, there's only one answer. This photon must be absorbed by that D, and this one from that one. And a mathematician calls this a planar topology or a genus zero topology. And that means we're going to have to go on a Beowulf-free and donut-free diet, uh, since those shapes are not genus zero. So now we can see the full scope of what baskets can be described by an undip word. It has to, the basket has to be trivalent, three edges at a vertex. It has to be Hamiltonian. It has a closed loop path that visits every vertex. And the shape has to be genus zero basically a topological sphere. Having a genus zero topology adds one little complication. We're not allowing paths to cross. And remember, the end of the story connects to the beginning of the story. This is the path of the electron. That means events on this side are completely separate from events on this side. Nothing can cross the electron path. And right now with the letters we have, everything happens on the left side. We need a couple more letters. We use N and P analogously to U and D. So now events on the left side are described by U and D and events on the right side are described by N and P. So from now on our stories have to be very explicit about which side an event is happening on. Since events on each side of an undip word are entirely independent, left side, right side, it really doesn't harm the story if events on opposite sides shuffle past each other. And in this case, the D refers to the left, the N refers to the right. We can switch the places of those two letters and we still get a perfectly good word, perfectly logical story and a basket that tells it. So now we have more possibilities. When we start with the empty word, we can insert either UD or NP. And we get two two-letter words. That multiplies the possibilities for four-letter words. Well, the first two rows from insertions and the shuffle rule used to produce the last two. So words are adding up really fast, and in fact, they grow spectacularly. The sequence is the product of consecutive Catalan numbers, and with 
uh, zero letters, we had one. With two letters, two. Four letters, ten. And the sequence goes on very, increasing very rapidly. Seventy, five, eighty-eight. By the time you get to twelve letters, fifty-six thousand six hundred and twenty-eight undip words. Now, there aren't that many baskets because one basket can tell a lot of stories. If you started at a different edge, or in the opposite direction, or perhaps you moved your perspective to inside the basket and that reverses left and right, you get a different story each time. But what all these words describe, what shape basket, we can only find that out by building one. And so let's try that right now. So here we have one of the 588 undip words in eight characters. And we're going to, uh, we're not just going to read the story, we're going to make the basket that tells it. We've got eight letters, that means eight vertices, and there are one and a half times as many edges as vertices, and one and a half times an even number is miraculously always divisible by three. So we get, from eight, we get 12 edges, and that divides by three to four each of each color. Do yourself a favor and pick the really standout color to be your electrons. I'm going to use that green. And these two will be the two energy states of our electron. We don't really keep track of the exact energy state, we just uh, do it mod 2, you could say. We've, we've changed the color each time there's an event. So, the story begins right here where there's just an electron moving along, and we're going to start with purple as the first energy state. And what the first letter says is we emit a photon to the left. Here's our green photon. And now we change our energy color. That's the first letter. The second letter is the same. It says, emit another photon to the left. And we remember to change our energy color. Now we're up to N, which says, emit a photon to the right. Easy enough. Just remember to change our energy color. Now D says to absorb an, a photon. And the way we find that photon, we know it's on the left. We just bring our hand down along until we find one that needs absorbing. It's always the first one you come to. And we change our energy, energy color. The next one is also a D, also absorbs a photon on the left. So again, we just bring our hand down to find the next one. And we're going to work that into this vertex, changing the color again. These are um, a new construction toy from Spin Master called Flexies. And they're really nice because your hand can really feel what it's doing when it works with these. But there's a lot of toys you can use. All right, that was the second D. Now there's another photon emitted on the left. Key thing is not get lost where you are in the undip word. Now P means close or uh, absorb a photon on the right. So we bring the hand down, all the way down. This one's a long ways away. Here it is. And we change our energy color. Our electron is just happily going along. Not much left of the story now. The last letter is D, which means to absorb a photon on the left. Bring the hand down the left, and there it is. And we know that our story repeats, that the electron moves in a loop. So this very last um, energy state is the first one, the loose end of the what, where we started. And that just closes very naturally. And there it is. We've made a word from a story and a basket from the word. Um, chemists recognize this shape. It, it's uh, the shape of the cuneane molecule. And uh, I think it's kind of pretty. The coloring, a mathematician would call this kind of uh, edge, th uh, coloring the edges in three uh, colors, uh, a Tate coloring. And uh, that was fun. Well, I hope you want to give this a try. You can find undip words on my website, along with a graphical representation that's a lot easier to memorize. I hope to be in World Maker Fair New York, September 17 and 18, 2011. So, see you in Queens.